was awesome. Yeah. Um, you guys are kind of spitting on this. This was oh. great. <laughs> if I see all y'all kind of go like this, I'll know. Just kind of, hey, bro, turn it down. Um, but no, that was awesome. I love the fact that Danny yeah. pointed out, you know, going through trials didn't make him forget the gift that God had given him. Going through trials that should have killed him was overcome by the gift that God had given him. Right. And it was Come through on. God's word that he was able to remember that gift. Come on. Yeah. Come on. So important. So important. So what's awesome is I, I kind of want to revisit what he just went over in 1 Corinthians 15. Because it's such an awesome section. If you really understand the gospel, it's so simple. Mm. The gospel is so simple. It's not complicated. It's not, it's not elaborate. It's so simple. And Paul just says it right here. He just lays it out. And then you see what happens. In chapter 15, in verse 1, he says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received on... Dang, the wind is blowing the paper. <laughs> Bear with me. Come on. He says, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Mm. So he's like... Hold on to this gospel. And then he tells us the gospel. He says, For what I received, I passed on to you as first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And that he appeared to Peter and then the twelve. And after that appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. Most of whom are still living. So he's, there it is. That's it. That's the gospel. Right. It's that simple. Come on. You're like, well, like... Do I need to go find a place where it's more detailed? Go on Google. Try to look it up. Hey, where's the gospel in the Bible? It's going to tell you 1 Corinthians 15. That's right. <laughs> it's right there. Come on. Like, that's it. Yeah, that's on. the power of God right there. Yeah. That's crazy. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Because Paul talks about it right afterwards in verse 9. He says, For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Right, so what do we just see? We see the gospel, and then we see a man who sees himself in the correct light. Wow. I'm the least. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you realize the change, Right? The, the gospel is the power of God. A man is told the gospel, and he's like, I'm the least. And then you see him say, but I work the hardest. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. When you realize that you're the least, what happens? You are the most dependent. Wow. Right? You're the most dependent on God. You're the most dependent on his grace. You're the one who realizes the most that you can't do it. Right. <laughs> you absolutely need God. That's a great point. You're the one saying, God, you got to pull through because I can't. You know, but Paul didn't complicate it. He said, let me tell you the gospel because that is the power of God. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing right. that has allowed me and given me the grace to do what I got to do. The title of my sermon Come on. is where there is grace, mm -hmm. there is a grind. Oh, oh. Right? <laughs> there it is. You scared of the grind? A little. Little? Yeah. A little bit? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Because the good thing is, is you're not alone. Point number one, cranking co-workers. Okay. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Just a couple pages over. In chapter 4, in verse 13, it says, It is written, this is awesome. Everybody's still turning pages. This is awesome. He says, It is written, I believed, therefore... I have spoken. Mm -hmm. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Mm -hmm. He was bold about that. If you're not speaking, you're going to have to ask yourself, do I believe? Mm -hmm. Do I have that same spirit of faith? And you're like, man, I'm quiet. I could show you some quiet people in this room that are cranking awesome. Right. <laughs> I could show you some introverted people who have denied themselves and are rocking it because they believe. Yeah, that's true. They believe. That's right. They've read the word and they're like, wow, they've been changed and now they speak. Mm. That's amazing. He goes on to say, because we know 
that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All of this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. It just reminds me of Danny's sermon. Everything he just said, he didn't fix his eyes on what was seen. Like, guy punched my TV? What the heck? Right. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Does it work? No. <laughs> he killed it. <laughs> That's just random, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> why did he punch your TV? You know, but then to get phone call after phone call after phone call. Right. Hey, by the way, you're leaving your home and you're being moved across the country. Yeah. Hey, by the way, all the dreams, all the hard work, everything you've been doing here in Boston, sorry, put it on the shelf. You're going somewhere else. Mm. Hey, your family's getting attacked left and right. Mm. What are you going to do? Mm. It's a great example of how light and momentary troubles didn't keep him from fixing his eyes on what is unseen. Right. It's a great example. It's a great example. So move down to chapter 6, same book, chapter 6, verse 1. It says, as God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So you might ask yourself, okay, I keep hearing this word grace. Man, what is all that about? Tell me a story. Maybe I can grasp it better. Well, I can tell you a personal story. But I'm not going to do that, actually, today. Excited about that? We got a couple. Got a couple. <laughs> but we're actually going to look at a story of that in the Bible. Let's go to 1 Samuel. We're going to look at a guy who was changed, right? And we're going to see what he did with it. 1 Samuel, in chapter 10. Come on, Joseph. Come on, bro. We're actually going to go to chapter 9. We're gonna, we're, I'm going to jump through a That's couple right. verses. On, so okay. just, just try to, you know, just, just scan really quick. Okay, we're but in chapter 9, verse 21, Saul, who as some of you guys might know, Saul at this time is basically just this, this farm kid, you know, taking care of his father's donkeys. And they're out looking for the donkeys. And to make a long story short, he ends up approaching Samuel, which is God's prophet, God's man. And Samuel tells him, you've been chosen by God to be appointed king. And so Samuel, or Saul answers in verse 21, Saul says, but am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe of Israel? Is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? Here's a man who's been told... Listen, God's got a plan for your life. A big one. <laughs> one that's going to take everything. Right. It's going to so radically change your life, you're not even going to know. And he's like, why would you say that to me? I'm the least. I'm the smallest. I'm from the smallest clan. I'm like, I'm nothing. Kind of like Paul. Paul's like, I'm the least. Watch what happens, though. Paul had the response to evangelize the world. Mm -hmm. But let's see what Saul, his response is. Mm -hmm. Chapter 10, and verse 1, Samuel then took a flask of oil, poured it on Saul's head, and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you leader over his inheritance? Skip down to verse 6. The Spirit of the Lord came upon you in power, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. Wow. wow. Skip down further, verse 9. As Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart. Wow. Mm. So wait a minute. Now all of a sudden you realize it ain't about you. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> it's actually about God. It's actually about God and the fact that he will change your heart. Nice. He's got a plan for you. He'll change your heart. Mm. That's grace. That's his favor. That's him reaching down and saying, listen. I've got a purpose. I know you're the least. That's why I've chosen you, but I'm going to change your heart. That way you're not going to take any of the glory. 
But watch what happens. Mm. Watch what happens. Because I think some of us can really relate to what Saul does here. What does he do? Skip down a couple more verses to verse 20. When Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. So Samuel had brought everybody together to show them who's going to be the king. They're going through man by man. Then he brought forward the tribe of Benjamin, clan by clan, and Matt Tree's clan was chosen. Finally, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen. But when they looked for him, he was not to be found. So they inquired further of the Lord, has the man come here yet? Watch what the Lord says. And the Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Dang. <laughs> Called him out. Right? God, where is he? He's like, guys, he's, he's hiding. He's in the bags over there. Like God totally like, exposed him, you know? <laughs> What's he doing? He's hanging out with the suitcases, you know? He's like, he's like just kind of like hanging out with the shovels, you know? What, what, where is this guy? Where's the guy that God himself has chosen to be king? He's hiding with the bags. He's hiding. God had already changed his heart, yet he's hiding. God has already showed him his favor and proved to him who he is and what he's supposed to do. And yet when the time comes, he's hiding. I think a lot of people in this room, myself included, have come to a place where you've been called to do something, and all of a sudden you're hiding in the bags. Some of you guys have... If you guys realize, the same spirit that was in Paul is the same spirit that's in you. Mm -hmm. Right? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that's in you. Yeah. Right? God's grace is the same then as it is now. Right. And it's got just as much power. It ain't about you. He changed your heart. Come on. Right? Stop Come hiding on. the bags. Come on. Get out of there. Realize he's got a vision for you. Realize the fact that his word is true. Yeah. Right? right? I know which one of you guys think that you believe that, right? Because I watch you. Right. You're speaking, right? What do you say? We, we believed, therefore we spoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think if there's anybody I want to lift up on that point, it's our sister Tamara. Come on, Tamara! Yeah. Wow! Not even, in, not even in the UW ministry, and I'm, I'm hearing about it, right? right? Here's a person who is a baby disciple, right? Who, our first kingdom day, she's like, well, I got some struggles. <laughs> I'm like, it's all right, let's talk about it. Come on. Right? And, and she just kept going. And I asked Danny last night, I said, Danny, tell me about Tamara. And he's like, bro, let me tell you about Tamara. She's the most fruitful. That's she's right. the most consistent. Yeah. She's the most evangelistic. Yeah. Even though she's lacking leadership, she's the most of all these other things. Come on. Come on. That's That's awesome. Awesome. Why? That's awesome. She yeah. believes. Right. Yeah. Come on. She understands it's not her, that God has changed her heart. Yeah. yeah. She's awesome. not hiding in the bags. Right. Okay. Yeah. She right. 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 That's cool. That's cool. You have to ask yourself, am I hiding in the bags? Mm. Because as you see, God exposed it. And still brought him out and made him king. Right? right? He couldn't just stay there. Come on. <laughs> like, if you're hiding in the bags, like, good luck hiding. Mm. If God's got a plan, he's going to pull you out of there. Right? right? You can try. <laughs> and then you're going to be standing up here saying, yeah, guys, that was me. I was hiding in the bags. <laughs> yep, yep, that was me. <laughs> Let's go to John, chapter 15. We're going to look at a promise from Jesus. This is awesome because there's some amazing, amazing stuff in these last few chapters of John. But in John chapter 15, in verse 15, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Mm. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Right. Fruit that will last. Wow. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Everybody in this room can be like, well, was I chosen? Yeah. 
<laughs> you were. You just said it, right? You're not a servant, you're his friend. And he's giving you a mission. What is that mission? Go bear fruit. Right. Fruit that'll last. Come on. It's not so you can just uh, be like scared to embrace your role. Ah. You have a role. And it's not about you. You are the least, in case you didn't know. Yeah. Maybe you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Maybe you need to see it. Maybe you need to realize I am the least. I'm the smallest. Maybe some of you guys were like super wise in the world. I wasn't. I've got a police record that can show it. <laughs> like, you want to talk about it? This doesn't do the stand up in the Bible. It doesn't mean. <laughs> I've been in more car accidents than all y'all here put together. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Come on. Not that I should boast about that, but it's just, it's true. You know, it's true. But when God says, look, listen, I've chosen you and I've anointed you. I've appointed you. Go and bear fruit. Your heart's changed. He's going to change your heart. Why? Because he's God. His grace isn't in vain. Right? He says, don't take the grace in vain. Your fellow co-workers, there's a mission for you to do, and it's to go bear fruit. You guys with me here? Yeah. yeah? It's to go bear fruit. The harvest is plentiful. Right. He says that it's going to last. If every single person in this room is a result of somebody being mm. faithful. Yeah, that's right? true. Somebody took God's promise, believed it, and reached out to you. Right. <laughs> right? Like, you are that fruit that's going to last mm -hmm. if you continue to hold on to it and go and reach out to this world. That's awesome. Point number two is it's going to take everything you got. Come on, Justin. Come on, Justin. I want to share with you guys some quotes from the world. Give you guys some, uh, some perspective that the world has on hard work. Because uh, where there's grace, there's a grind, right? Yeah. Right. Well, what if there is no grace? What does the grind in the world look like when God's not there changing people's hearts? Mm -hmm. Right? There's a guy named Newt Gingrich. He says that perseverance is the hard work you do after you get tired of doing the hard work you already did. Oh. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm already done. I've been working hard. Persevering is continued. Mm. You're going on. I'm tired. Keep going. That was his attitude. I wonder what it was for. It's probably for something crazy like, who knows? Right? <laughs> right? Probably it's for building a business or something in the world. There's another guy. His name's Jim Valvano. He said, never give up. Failure and rejection are only the first step to succeed. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Right? That's a man in the world. Says, I'm willing to face failure and rejection because I know it's just the first step. Mm. Yet in the kingdom, there's people hiding in the bags because they're facing failure and rejection. Come on. Right? Yeah. Their heart's been changed. What is going on? But my favorite one is from a guy named Guy Kawasaki. I thought it was the guy from the motorcycles. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I looked it up. <laughs> but what he said is, what I lack in talent, I compensate with my willingness to grind it out. Hey, wow. wow. That's the secret of my life. Wow. wow that's awesome. So I was curious. I was like, who is this guy? You know, his willingness to grind it out. And his name is Guy Takiyao Kawasaki. He's an American marketing specialist. He's an author in the Valley, uh, and he's a, a Silicon Valley venture capitalist. He was one of Apple's employees originally responsible for marketing their Macintosh computer line in 1984. Wow. He popularized, I need some water here, the word he popularized, how do you say that word? Popularized. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I feel like I'm saying it wrong. I got, I got, I got, I got water right here. Oh, you need a refill. I got water. I got some stuff on here. I got water in the bag. Oh, my God. Just busted out a magic trick. <laughs> so... What this really struck me, he says, he says he popularized the word evangelist in marketing for the Macintosh computer. He was the one that evangelism marketing and technology marketing was the one that he, he was the one that popularized that. Wow. How is that? How is a guy in the world popularizing that word? Talking about very specifically that his attitude was that I lack talent. Hmm. But I compensated with my willingness to grind it out. Wow. That's the secret of my life. That's awesome. That'd be great. He was That's willing. Really he was just willing. He was like, all right, I'm willing to grind it out. 
There's some people in this room that are willing to grind it out. That's for sure. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, we just talked about Sierra. It's true. She's like dying at four in the morning. Right. And then you see her at Devo the next day. Right. Yes. She's like, I'm here, bro. Where are you? <laughs> what you been doing? <laughs> I've been evangelizing with the doctors. <laughs> I share my faith over there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what do you mean you don't feel good? <laughs> it's amazing. But she has a willingness to grind it out. Uh, it's awesome. I can remember the, the time in my life when I was younger. I remember my dad, such a crazy example, his willingness to grind it out. Um... I, this, this guy, if I had told you all the stories about, about my father, he was uh, like the Terminator to me. <laughs> like, he couldn't, he couldn't kill him. You know, you just couldn't take him out. He was like, he survived accidents that were outrageous, you know. Wow. Like, he got in a car accident when he was 17, 18 with his like souped up muscle car into a tree at like 70 miles an hour. Shoved the engine all the way back and pinned him to the seat. Oh he like completely bled out. He had a titanium plate in the side of his head. That should have killed him. Didn't. Went to the military, got completely shot up on his legs, had to relearn how to walk, completely bled out there, should have killed him. Ended up going home, and there's some crazy stuff that happened, but because of his military training, he got in some trouble in the world. And he ended up going to prison for 12 years in a couple max prisons. Dang. Right? He was on death row, thought he was going to die. He should have died there. That's crazy. How does a skinny, tall, white guy, about a little bit shorter than Danny, but about his build, survive a double next prison? I don't know. Crazy. A skinny white boy, is, what's he going to do? <laughs> what's he going to do, you know? But he gets out, he meets my mom, and decides to raise two kids. Wow. Right? Isn't that nuts? A miracle for God. It's amazing. But what I watched that man do is when I was five, he got in a car accident down the side of the mountain, and tumbled all over the place inside this car. And it was the first time I spent the night at a friend's house. I was five years old. And he had broken a rib that had been dislocated to the center of his stomach. Oh my God. It was a two-inch lump in the center of his stomach. Okay? Now you would think, take your butt to the hospital and get that fixed. That's not good. Right? Some people can't breathe with a cracked rib, right? He's got this thing just chilling. <laughs> just like, hey, how you doing? My new friend. He lived with that for the next 12 years. Wow, that's crazy. That's pride. Mm. That's the unwillingness to submit yourself and get help. Wow. I've watched pride destroy people, wow. people that I love. Wow. But for him, wow. he said, I love my family, and I'm willing to get up every day and grind it out. Dang. He didn't have God's grace. And then I see people whose hearts have been changed. People who have the power of the living God inside of them. And they're not using it. Wow. It's crazy. It makes me wonder. Do you believe? Have you heard? Are you hiding in the back? Wow. Get out from under there. You know what the great thing is? The great thing is there's repentance. Amen? Amen. 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 Right? You hear it? And you say, okay, I'm going to repent. Because yes. God is good. Yeah. Right? God is good. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. Come on. This is awesome. Come on, Justin. This blows me away. Because it, it makes me wonder, like, wow, am I really, uh, am I really doing what I should be doing? Okay. So we're going we're gonna to go through this really quickly. Just to reference another scripture. So in 2 Corinthians 11, in verse 23, this is Paul speaking. He says, are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. I mean, just that one line, who can say that? Mm. Five times I received the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beat with rods, once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Imagine that. Hey, how did work go? Oh, I got stoned. <laughs> no big deal, you know. <laughs> what happened last week? Oh, I was shipwrecked. <laughs> what the week before that? They flogged me, man. They beat the heck out of me. Right? He says, I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own countrymen, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, in the country, in the sea, and from false brothers. 
I have labored and toiled and gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin and I do not inwardly burn? Here's a man who understood grace, mm. right? Here's a man who understood he was the least, but he was powered by something greater than himself. And as he went through trial after trial after trial after trial, it didn't break him. Why? Because he wasn't focused on that. Yeah. He wasn't focused on that. He understood. God has a purpose. He's changed my heart. It's his power working through me. His grace is not in vain. That's right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, I'm curious because there's a lot of people in here that all have parents that have different professions. But how many people have actually heard their parents, or maybe even you've heard somebody else say, like, hey, do you want your kids to do what you do? Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever heard that question? Mm-hmm. Like, like, you go up to a random person, hey, do you want your kids to do what you do? Do you want them to follow in your footsteps? Mm-hmm. What's the usual answer? No. no. Heck no. Right? right? Want them to go to college and get a way better start than me. Yeah. Right? I, d- I don't want them to make the same mistakes I did. Right. This is amazing. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Come on. Okay. If you guys are familiar, Timothy is Paul's son in the faith. Right. He wasn't his physical son, but he loved this guy. Mm-hmm. So much so, he says, this, there's nobody like this kid. There's nobody like this young man. He has my heart. He's effectively gotten my heart. He's effectively grabbed a hold of God's word. He's effectively understood the grace that is working in his life. I love this guy. I love this young man. It's like a father. <coughs> calls him Timothy, my son, right? So imagine, here's your kid, somebody you love. And put yourself in Paul's shoes. He's been through all this stuff. Stoned, shipwrecked, flogged, beaten, jailed, imprisoned, naked, hungry, alone, <laughs> right? He's been through it. Now, if you ask somebody's parents, hey, do you want your kids to go through what they went through? They say, heck no. What do you think Paul said to Timothy? Mm. What do you think he said? It's in verse 8, chapter 1, verse 8, 2 Timothy. He says, mm. so do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join me with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Wow. It rocks my world. For Paul to be in chains, knowing he's about to die, to write to the person he loves the most, to say, stay on track. (laughs) Stay on the path. You're doing fine. Just stay focused. The grace of God is not in in vain. That blows me away. Mm -hmm. Let me look at somebody I love and just say, you know what's coming. (laughs) It's gonna suck. (laughs) But don't worry. (laughs) Don't focus on that, yeah. right? It's not in vain. So I want to inspire you guys with the same thought, right? Where there's grace, there is a grind. You're not going to be changed by God just to sit on the ground and play video games. Mm, come on. You're not going to be changed by God and then all of a sudden have no struggles. Yeah. That's true. People are struggling in the world, and they're more than willing to go through it and persevere, mm. Right? I don't know how we get the thought of like, oh, I'm with God now. Everything's perfect. No. It's going to be perfect. No work. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> no work. That's not true. He saved you for work. There's work to be done. Yeah. But the difference is he's changed your heart and given you the power to do it. And you know what's amazing? He'll give you a Paul <coughs> in your life yeah. who's willing to give you his heart and encourage you to stay on the path. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. People in the world don't get that. Right. People in the world definitely don't get a hope for the future. Mm. What they work for is gone. It's one of my greatest struggles. Man, why is it that I work and I work and I work and I work and I work? Copy of my dad, just like my dad. I was working 19 hours a day at 16. It was just the farm life. Like, that's what you do. And it wasn't just me. It was everybody. If the sun is still up, you're still chasing cows. You know? <laughs> like... What the heck? <laughs> I was dark. Let me tell you what. I was darker than uh, some of <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I was like, 
like, it was definitely darker than Gilbert. Definitely dark. It's like, <laughs> I was like, I had a tan, you know? That's right. But that stopped right here, you know? It's just, <laughs> like, call me two-tone, you know? Like, it was bad. It looked like an Oreo. <laughs> then, then I moved to Oregon. It's gone. I'm like, that's, that's all there is to that. But, you know what's amazing is I want to I really just point out a couple people who are here in this room today who have understood the grace of God and have not let it go in vain. One of those people is the brick himself. Come on, Blake! Come on, Eddie. Honestly, guys, like, what an amazing contribution message, guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Give it up for our brother. <laughs> but I hope you guys really heard his heart yeah. because what he just said was real. It was real. Like, he faced struggle where he wasn't going to church, he wasn't giving contribution, he was sitting at home playing video games, he was focusing on his job and coming home, there was no fellowship, there was no prayer. Mm, come on. There was no interest to allow you to dig into his heart. Wow. Get away from him. I'll come back to God when I feel like it. Wow. Dang. Mm. That's a man whose hope had been deferred. Mm. He's a straight up miracle from God, I'm telling you guys. Yeah. He, Come on. he was willing to face his sin and overcome it and repent, right? He's got the, he's got the knowledge, but he didn't live the life. Mm. As so many people will do. They'll either live the life and neglect the Bible, or read the Bible and neglect the life. Super proud of you, dude. Another person I want to lift up is Joel and Courtney. <laughs> Courtney's not here, obviously. Oh, where's Joel? But I just want to, I just want to point out. Where there's grace, there is a grind, right? That's right. They're in the middle of moving. Yeah. They have two kids, two very energetic kids. Well, one very energetic kid, the other one's very needy, right? Okay. Both are needy. <laughs> needy family. <laughs> in the middle of that, in the middle of moving, in the middle of raising a family, I've never seen a man more focused on his family. Mm. And I love you for that. But he's got studies like crazy. He's on campus around the clock, and he leads with passion. Yep. Right? Come on. Grace doesn't come without a grind. Yeah. He's willing to grind. Mm -hmm. Another person I'd have to say is Michael Stewart over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy, there is a grind in his grace, right? That's right. This guy, amazing, has been hearing God's word, has been faced with challenges, and has been willing to obey. Wow. He's had to make some tough decisions. As everybody in here who's counted the costs have had to do, but he actually obeyed. Wow. He's come to that place and he says, man, God's word is so clear. So funny. He told me the other night, he's like, dang, Danny told me what I got to do. I went home. I was being a good Brie and I read it like six times and I was like, dang it. That's what it says. I got to do it. Come on. <laughs> and he did it. This guy was up with us. Me and Danny, he was up with us till 2.30 in the morning last night. Wow. Nice. With his face in the Bible. That's right. Right? He's passionate about evangelism. Yes. He's passionate about God's word. Come on. Where there's grace, there is a grind. Super yeah. proud of you, dude. Another person just to lift up would have to be the guy right next to him, Spencer. Come on, come on. This dude's been living with me all week. Wow. It's been crazy. He's like, no, I ain't going home. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to go home. I want to stay with you guys. He, he has a heart that's incredibly humble to God's word, and he's on, willing Spencer. to make changes. That's what it's all about. He's willing to make changes. When you hear God's word, are you willing to make changes? Right? That grace is not without effect. And in that, in that sense, the fact is, is that I want everybody to do just one simple exercise. If you're physically unable, go ahead and stay seated. I want everybody to stand up. Everybody stand up. Okay. Stretch out your hands here. Get to feeling it. All right. Now this is going to be tough. Some of you guys are going to be restricted by suits and stuff. But I want you to reach as high as you can towards the roof. And I mean as high as you can. Give it all you got. Just as high as you can. All the way up. Is that it? Is that all you got? Are you sure? I'm saying all you got. Okay? Got it? Now give me one more inch. You see that? You're good, guys. One more inch. You've got more in you than you think you do. Right? Love you guys. To God be all the glory. <laughs> all right, so let's uh, stay standing, sing one final song. Um, this song also, it's uh, very just like, repeat what I said, right? Sing what I, like I said. Um, ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Lord, the people praise you. Lord, the people praise you. We lift you up and we raise you. We lift you up and raise you. Oh, you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Lord, the people love you. Lord, the people love you. And we'll place nobody above you. Place nobody above you. Oh, Thank you. 